the um, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency in San Francisco, California, with the guy who discovered the Great Pacific Garbage Bag. And he threw me a bag. He said, check this out, Manuel. He threw me this bag, and I looked at it. And inside there was a very uh, strange thing. It looked like sand, but it was not really sand, and it was multicolored. And I asked him, what is this? And he said, well, that is from Camilo Beach in Hawaii. That's what the beaches of the future are going to look like. That's plastic. So I learned right there that there was a beach in the southern tip of Hawaii, a beach forming made out of plastic. And then I saw it. I understood that plastic is a material the planet cannot digest. Just think about that. We created a material that the planet cannot digest. It's going to last 700, 800, 1,000 years in the environment. So you see all these bottles of plastic here, and you see also trucks driving around? Well, those trucks, those buses are going to be gone sooner than the plastic bottles. Think about it. You have a plastic bomb. That's awesome. Well, it works great. Okay. You're getting probably high out of a lot of other things and the whatever you burn there, too. You'll be finding out very soon about it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a material that planet cannot digest. A material so durable, you can use it for whatever you want except for one thing. For things that are meant to be thrown away. Things that we only need for a few minutes, a few hours, a few days. But that's exactly what we're doing with plastics. We're taking a material that lasts forever. We're using it for things that we only need for a few minutes, like those bottles that we're all using here. Right? So that's the first important truth that you have to carry with you. A material that lasts forever cannot be used for things meant to be thrown away. That's a catastrophic cultural mistake that we have to reverse very soon. The other thing that I discovered soon is that plastic is a secret. The components of plastics are a trade secret. There's somebody who owns the intellectual property of every piece of plastic you see. And sometimes even half of the plastic uh, is actually additives. It's not just polymerized oil or natural gas or whatever it is, but it's actually toxic additives. So when you eat out of plastic, when you drink out of plastic, you are eating and drinking out of a toxic mystery. There's no way of knowing the toxic chemicals that are in there. And I'm going to show you later, those toxic chemicals are very serious and are linked with practically all the epidemics of our world today, like autism, like Alzheimer's, like diabetes, like obesity, like um, uh, attention deficit disorder in children, miscarriages, breast cancer, the lid goes on and on and on. So these are two very important truths about plastic. Last forever, don't use it for throwaway objects, and also don't put your food and your drink in it if you care about your health. Um, pretty soon in my journey, I learned um, about a lot of myths that are being uh, put out there by the media about plastic. One of them is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. How many of you, raise your hand if you heard about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? See, we heard about it, and uh, me too. I thought it was like a big floating island that you could, you know, take a a boat out there and then be in this island and see all full of garbage. But actually none of us has seen a picture of it, right? And let me tell you why. Because it's not a floating island of plastic. It's just very, very fine pieces of plastic. Because plastic, as I said before, lasts forever. But it actually breaks down. That's the devilish thing about it. Plastic ages, becomes brittle, breakable, and starts breaking down into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. How small? Well, it can break down all the way to the molecular level. You can have a one molecule of plastic, but it's still plastic. You know, it's still indigestible. If you put a bacteria next to a molecule of plastic and ask the bacteria, please, it is plastic, degrade it for me. It's like giving the Titanic to a rabbit. That is the, the size. It's huge. There's huge polymerized molecules that cannot be degraded. But plastic fragments, and these fragments actually are very powerful attractors for toxic chemicals. So there's other toxic chemicals beyond the toxics in the plastic itself that are going to glue themselves to plastic because plastic is made out of oil, slip of filling. And a lot of the garbage that we put in the ocean, a lot of the toxic fertilizers, 
a lot of the poisons we put out in our oceans and our rivers are like this. They are soluble in oil, they are going to attach themselves to the plastic, so these trillions of particles of plastics that are around in the environment are actually becoming poison pills. It's very interesting. And these particles of plastic are being ingested. You know, whales are eating plastic. Sea turtles are eating plastic. Seabirds are eating plastic. Camels are eating plastic in the desert, plastic bags. Cows are eating plastic in India. And you know what? Plankton, the smallest tiny uh, organisms in the ocean, are eating microplastics. So guess who's eating plastics, too? We are. <coughs> so um, when I started this journey, one of the things I wanted is to give people a visual. You know, I didn't care much about the intellectual understanding. I wanted people to feel something about plastics. And I started a journey with a bunch of artists trying to find the best visuals that we could possibly find that would, uh, you know, give people an idea of what plastic pollution is. So, um, oh, before I forget, can we clean it up? Well, you know, a lot of people, the first reaction about plastic pollution is let's go out to the beaches, let's go out the ocean and let's clean it up and I say that is an interesting educational activity because we're going to learn how much of it is out there but it doesn't help why not because by the time we finish cleaning the beach there is hundreds of tons of plastic entering the rivers entering the oceans why because plastic is very light it fragments and the ocean is downwind and downstream from everywhere so it's one of the places where we can go and see the manifestation of plastic pollution, but we cannot possibly clean it up. Just tiny bits of plastic swirling all over the ocean. Not only in the gyre. Right now, there's more plastic on its way to these gyres, these areas of accumulation, than at the areas of accumulation themselves, because our use of plastic, our addition to plastics, our plastic footprint is increasing. So let me show you a video. Let me see if you can see it. It's a video of me trying to clean up a beach on Midway Island, which is one of the most remote islands of the planet. see them but look at the size of these things they're as big as the sand There's, that's plastic that's plastic that's plastic so that's the scariest thing you there's no way to clean this up beaches of the future will be made of plastic this is food there's a little shrimp this is not food this is plastic but that's what the fish are eating and what the plankton are eating, microplastics and what the entire ocean wildlife are eating By the way, all the beaches in the world right now, if you go to Antarctica, Greenland, Polynesia, it doesn't matter, go to any beach, pick a random sample of sand, put it under a microscope, and you're going to find microplastics. There is not a single beach without plastic in the world. This is something our children and grandchildren are not going to know. 
So it's something that makes me incredibly sad. So Midway Journey is a project um, that I'm going to be talking about a lot today. It's a great project to try and give you visuals, to feel something about this and what we can do about it. So the garbage patch, just really quick, I'm going to show you some visuals that give you an idea of what these garbage patches are or are not. This is the areas of convergence I was talking about. It's basically the equivalent in the ocean of deserts in the land. It's the areas where kind of winds roll around and it's all the stuff accumulates. Um, this is the Pacific garbage patch. It's you know, twice the size of Canada, more or less, huge. And uh, this is what it looks like. That uh, in the jar, is the result of 12 hours of trawling a very fine net, almost like a, like a woman's pine hose, really fine, through the water. And what you collect is little, little bits of plastic and a lot of plankton. Plankton is microscopic uh, animals and algae. If you analyze that, you'll discover 10 times, 4 to 10 to 12 times, sometimes more plastic than uh, plankton. There's more plastic than food, basically, in the ocean today. So Midway Journey is a project that is very dear to my heart. Uh, it's led by Chris Jordan. He's a terrific environmental artist. I encourage you to check out his website. And um, we decided, a bunch of artists, a bunch of people decided we're going to travel to this island. This island, that's an aerial view of the island. It's one of the most remote places on the planet. It's about uh, two kilometers long and um, you know a few fo football fields wide. So it's smaller than a uh, really tiny island and it's 3,000 kilometers from the nearest continent, kind of in between San Francisco and Tokyo, Hawaii, and the Arctic. So it doesn't really get more remote than that. And this island is the nesting ground for the Laysan albatross. These are the Laysan albatross, amazing seabirds. They live to be 60, 65 years old, so almost like humans. They mate for life. They are not afraid of humans at all because they spend all of their life out in the ocean. They don't touch land ever except to breathe, to lay their eggs. And they all converge in this tiny island by the millions. And the entire island becomes a wonderful place colored with these magical creatures. They lay their eggs, their chicks hatch, and then their parents go out in the ocean foraging for food. They are visual hunters. So they fly over the waters and, and, get, and gather fish, little squid, things like that, bring that into their bellies and recruit it to the chicks. So I'm going to show you the trailer of a film we are making to tell the story of what's happening there. And I'll let the trailer speak. This trailer, by the way, has gone viral and has been viewed by five million people.
to face the realities of our time and allow ourselves to feel deeply enough that it transforms us and our future. Come with me on a journey through the eye of beauty. an ocean of grief. Please don't, don't applaud, thank you. Um, it's one of the things I wanted to, to ask you today, actually, is uh, also when my talk ends, I'm going to ask you not to applaud. I think sometimes, you know, we uh, consume information, right? We, and I am too, you know, uh, taking a lot of info, a lot of stats, a lot of uh, new realities, and sometimes the applause makes us, you know, put it apart in that part of our brain when where we part a lot of things that are uncomfortable for us. You know? So I'm going to ask you today not to not to applaud. If there's you feel moved to make gestures or silence or something like that, that would be preferable. And um, I later my talk is going to end with actually uh, what we call a prayer formance, which we're going to have a, a Raquel Boluda, a great dancer and healer, join us to try and transform and move all these feelings that we're all feeling. And I mean, how many of you got like strong feelings watching this video? Raise your hand if you were like moved by it. Okay. Me too, you know, I was in Midway in April and I cried my eyes out, you know, and uh, let's all hold those feelings uh, today and uh, work through them together as we learn also what to do about this. And um, um, yeah, these are some of the images that Chris Jordan has taken. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is that you don't need to go anywhere far away to find scary examples. So really quickly, I'm going to show you a few images. This is uh, Manila, the Philippines. Uh, this is Camilo Beach in Hawaii, great surfing oh. spot. Uh, this is uh, Aruba. And this is Haiti. A lot of the aid to Haiti was wrapped in plastic. And you know what? There's not an exit strategy for plastic. Plastic goes to Haiti, stays in Haiti. So Haiti is incredibly destroyed by plastic, unfortunately. This is the uh, United Arab Emirates. And actually, this is a place where uh, the organization of funded Plastic Pollution Coalition is very popular because plastic is killing their beloved camels. Uh, this is Bulgaria. This is the LA River in Los Angeles. This is uh, El Salvador. This is a sea turtle nesting beach. And now the sea turtles have to dig through the trash to reach the sand and then dig through the sand to lay their eggs. Um, anybody realizes what this is? Uh, that's the anus of a sea turtle. And there's so many plastic bags out in the ocean and so much plastic that turtles also are mistaking a plastic for food. Uh, turtles love to eat jellyfish, and plastic bags in the in the ocean look a lot like jellyfish. You know, so this is a uh, dissection of a giant leatherback uh, sea turtle having plastic inside. This is a baby uh, sea turtle that had more than 200 kg of plastic in its stomach, and there's a lot of entanglement, also problems um, because of plastic. So uh, let's bring it home. So I mean, in Portugal, Spain, anywhere, it doesn't matter wherever you're coming from, I'm sure there's a lot of plastic pollution. And this is actually, for me, this is the garbage patch. This is where it all begins, in our homes, in our refrigerators, in our bathrooms, in our stores. You know, when I learned to pla about plastic pollution, I went into my organic food market, 
I was so outraged. I was so overwhelmed because everything, everything, all the good stuff, good stuff, right? Uh, organic, fair trade, blah, 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 was in plastic. So this is one of the tough things when you learn about this is that it's overwhelming. But we are slowly transforming the consciousness and making plastic visible. That's the first step. So um, I was talking earlier about toxic chemicals in plastic. Well, I'm going to talk briefly about just one of them. It's called bisphenol A. Bisphenol A is put into plastic to make it clear and shiny and beautiful. And that's one of the great things of plastic. Plastic can have all these amazing properties. Hard, soft, pliable, colorful. And all that is achieved through chemicals. Bisphenol A, very useful chemical for the plastics industry. And what it does, um, well, this is a comparison of a study that was done. Here is the level in uh, um, animals, lab animals, and this is the levels on humans, right? They have been detected. And at very low levels, animals are found with a lot of health hazards, you know, cancer. Uh, uh, links, uh, chemicals in plastic are linked to all these cancers that you can read here. Reproductive disorders, reduced fertility, low sperm counts, early puberty. Because plastic, the chemicals in plastic mimic estrogen, they mimic hormones, they, be high, they behave in our bodies like hormones, and only tiny, tiny amounts have a huge disruptive effect of all the cells in our bodies. And if now we did uh, some drawing of blood, if we got some volunte volunteers here and tested the blood, all of you, all of you have these chemicals. We all have them. And if we went to the hospital, nearest hospital, and tapped the blood of babies, even higher because the mothers clean themselves through the placenta of these toxic chemicals. So babies are being born pre-polluted with toxic chemicals. So eating, drinking out of plastic, not a good idea, not a good idea. And see, all these are kind of the epidemics of our time, right? All these things that are on the rise and people don't know how they're happening. So how do we get here? This is very cool, uh, an interesting story. This is the cover of Time Magazine. Uh, in the 50s. It was a throwaway society, right? Where the woman would be liberated from having to do dishes or do anything. Convenience, right? Just freedom. Uh, yeah, that's how it all started with this perception of convenience. Uh, but it's more than that. Plastic is really goes hand in hand with our globalization, you know? It's cheap, it's light, and it goes with fear very well, with all the fear that drives our society, you know? Fear of what? What? Getting cut, you know, by sharp things, things breaking. Uh, it's the fear of a life that has rough edges. And it's a way of denying our mortality. Fear of sharing. Everything is individually wrapped for you, like these little bottles of water. Not the big bottle, the small one. It's just for you, right? You don't have to share it. No human lips have touched it. It's hygienic. There's no, you're not going to get infected, you know? So it goes along with fear. and. These are the pr predictions for the plastic industry, you know? It just keeps going and going and going. It's part of all this system of this cultural destruction that we live in. Plastic is part of the grease that makes it possible. And um, what are the real solutions? And this is one of the problems that we find, that the plastic industry is very smart, and they take all this energy, and they say, oh, people, it's very easy. You need to recycle more. Well, guess what? Recycling is a Trojan horse that has been implanted in our brains to justify this throwaway society. Nobody here has ever recycled anything. What we do is, think about it, we put things in bins. They tell us, that's the recycling bin. Put the stuff in that bin. Where does it go? Has anybody ever asked that question? Has any other, anybody ever researched that? Well, guess what? Plastic has very little value. You cannot, it's not a virgin material. It's not like glass metal that you can melt. If, if you melt plastic, it's just melted plastic. It's garbage. What you can do with it is maybe fibers, carpets, but that doesn't do anything to stem the need for more new bottles or new plastic forks or whatever it is. So it doesn't help. So think again. Plastic is kind of a scam. It's not working. It's not working. It's only making us feel good. The more garbage we produce, the more garbage we put in the bin. In actuality, a lot of the recycling goes to China, goes to China, gets burned there, goes to the landfill straight, the people that collected put it in the, in, the, in the landfill straight away. 
just to give you some figures, only 7% of plastics end up in a recycling bin, end up collected. 93% don't even make it to the bin. And most that make it to the bin don't go to an actual closed loop recycling. So recycling is not going to be the solution. So uh, also, the industry is very smart. It's time to greenwash their image. Like this plant bottle. Look, green bottle cap, right? W what's that going to do? It's the same bottle cap that painted green. But it's already affecting our brains. Look at this symbol. What does it mean, really? But a lot of people are choosing this plastic because it's, they think already, you see this. This is created by, by really smart people. They think, oh, this is cool. Yeah, it's green. I'm going to prefer this thing. It says up to 30% plant-based, up to 30%. That could be 0.1%, right? Think about it. And 100% recyclable. That doesn't mean that it's going to get recycled. That is collectible. That's what it means that can be collected by somebody in your community. And actually what this is, is PET, just like the plastic you're drinking out of. The same thing, but with a little bit of ethanol put in the mix. And they call it plastic. Uh, plant bottle. This is going to be 700 in the years in the environment. So beware for that. So what are the solutions? They say uh, reduce, reuse, recycle, right? Well, I say refuse. That's the first R. Refuse. You don't need plastic for a lot of uses. You don't need a plastic bag every time you go shopping. You go shopping almost every day or every week. Bring your own bag, for God's sakes. That's what humans have always been doing. Carry your own container for water. Refill it. Refuse plastics as much as you can. There's some great restaurants here where you won't see any plastic, right? In others, you see it. Choose those and see how it can be done. So refuse disposable plastics. Avoid plastic for food and drink. This is really important for your health. And by the way, can, canned food is lined with plastic inside. So avoid canned food too. There's like a, like a slippery thing inside of cans that is made with uh, a plasticy surface that has this phenol A, so avoid, avoid that too. Very important, very important. Yeah, the beer also. Uh, all the insides of the cans for drinks or for food are lined with this film that has this phenol A. So it's better to get things in glass and in metal. Yeah, so this beer. The thing is with cold drinks, the leaching of the chemicals is less than with food because food is put in it. Uh, is heated, you know, to to make it up reserve. So there's more leaching, can can food that for drinks. Demand legislation, and it's interesting. The developing world is ahead of us because they are drowning in plastic. So they are banning plastic bags and they're moving ahead very quickly. And also stop the throwaway culture. That's really the solution. Let's stop the throwaway culture. And I hope for 2014 boom to be plastic free. I'm really hoping for that. Uh, also, you know, talk to others. I hope you share this, please, with your communities, with the people you love. Share this message and pass it on and connect with others. This is Plastic Pollution Coalition, the organization I co-founded. You can find it on Facebook, online, etc. And um, um, see how we're doing time-wise. Uh, we're not doing very well because we started really late. But I can take a couple of questions, uh, if there's a couple of questions that anybody has. Yes? I'll, I can repeat your question, so... Yes. So she's asking about the survival of the birds, of the albatrosses, and, um, well, um, the seabirds, uh, apparently the population is stable. Yeah, a lot of them are dying because of the plastic, but they're still reproducing okay. And we're not making this film to save the seabirds. We're making the film to make sure that the message they have for humanity is heard. We don't see them as victims. We see them as heroes. They are messengers. They are dying to provide a powerful metaphor. And when I see that bird stuff with plastic, I see myself. That's us. That's us literally because of the toxic load, but also a figuratively filling up our lives with things that have no value, right, and are colorful. Another question? Ah, não, porque não tens memórias, não tens memórias não feitas tá. aqui. Não. Mas onde é que está o outro micro? Right. Cool. 
Yeah, he's asking if there's any solution in terms of new materials coming out that are actually biodegradable. And uh, here's the thing, there is biodegradable plastics, but they're also trade secrets, again. So we're never going to know what is in them. And so we have the same toxicity problems. Also, when they biodegrade, a lot of these toxics are going into our compost or are going into our land, etc., etc. So we have those problems too. And also, they are even more polluting to manufacture than regular plastics. Regular plastics are made of oil. It's actually kind of the leftover of oil, the excrement of oil. But you can make them with anything. You can make plastic with organic hemp or whatever you want. Um, so bioplastics are, can be a great solution for some applications, but not for everything, because they have a huge footprint also on our health and our planet. And all this effort and technology so that we can drink out of a straw for a minute, I think the change of habits is So um, I think without further ado, we're going to go ahead into our prayer performance. And, um, I'm going to be sharing with you, so Raquel, if you are back there, you can make your way over here. Um, and we're going to do something different, you know, instead of finish the talk with applause and, and get on, we're going to try and transform these feelings into beauty, into moving forward, into community, into avoiding plastics in your daily lives. And um, I'm going to be sharing with you a video uh, which hasn't been seen by anybody yet uh, in, um, if I can get to go. It's a new video from Midway. I was there in April with Chris Jordan and uh, this video hasn't been released. It's very interesting. It's a dance, the mating dance of the albatross. Albatross are amazing creatures. They're really spiritual beings. And uh, the way they dance is incredible. And what happens is, you know, I don't know if you know this, but the perception of time in our brain depends on the size of our brains. Like really small animals, like bees, for instance, the, 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 the brain is so small that the thoughts travel across really quickly. So a bee that is moving its wings really fast actually is doing that. So, and an albatross also perceives times very slowly. So I'm going to show you the dance of the albatrosses at the real speed and then the way they actually experience it. And then we'll transition into the prayer performance by Raquel. She will be here dancing. And after that, what I will ask you is not to applaud, but to remain silent for, for a few minutes or a few seconds and, and process all this information. So here are the uh, dancing albatrosses for you.
Thank you. Let's, let's just rem remind uh, in silence for a little bit and send our prayers and send our healing and show our compassion for ourselves and for the Jesus in plastic. As we move away from the plastic. Thank you. 